Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market and don't ask me to talk about what politicians are going to do about the water situation. I am not going down that rabbit hole again. <laughs> chill, people, chill. Um, I talked a few days ago about back on market homes because when I tracked the seven day moving average, um, number of new listings popped up a little bit right here. Not a lot, two, 300 homes. And I thought, what's going on? And I looked and it was back on market that spiked up. So you've got new listings and then homes that were put back on the market. And well, now that's since gone down a little bit back to its normal trend. But our homes going under contract continues to get lower and lower as the interest rates increase. So I look at the Cromford uh, report this morning and they have an article about that back on market and they share an interesting uh, take out of that and saying that uh, that we can see that the 428 listings that were pending as under contractor contingency went back to active status in the week starting October 2nd this is about 6.5 percent of the listings under contract falling through and being remarketed each week at the same time last year, we saw 3.4% of contracts in escrow going back on the market. We also have a lot fewer listings under contract, starting with 6593 when we last checked, compared with almost 11,000 last year. Well, the percentage of homes that are going back on market has definitely doubled its increase because we don't have as many new homes being listed. So there are, as a percentage, more homes going back on market. We had been running roughly eight to 900 homes going back on the market over a seven day period, and that's about 680 now. So the number of homes that are getting flushed back into the system has not increased, but the percentage has. And that's hurting something that's called the, um, the listing success rate, which is this here you know if you've listed your home how did, did you succeed did you get a contract and clearly that's getting worse and worse but what is back on market there's a couple things going on um, one is simply that the buyers just can't perform and they uh, you know they're the interest rate spiked up they had didn't lock their rate so they have to walk away from the contract or <clears throat> Usually, um, negotiations didn't go well during the inspection period, but there's a third component out there too, and that is there's still a lot of investor traffic. And there's a lot of investors out there right now that are still trying to do wholesale deals where they'll send you an offer for your home that's cash, and their intention is to take that contract and sell that contract to another buyer, another investor, so they can make a quick five or $10,000 off of it. And if they can't find a buyer, then they just back out of the deal and you got to relist your house. Or the investors say, I'm going to buy this house for, you know, $300,000. And then they inspect it and they send in their general contractors. And the general contractor says, well, this is going to cost you more than you thought it would to remodel it. So they say, well, I'm out and they back out. So there's a lot of that still going on out there. And it always has gone on. And that's the way, you know, flippers work. They you know, they quickly look at a house. They can't, you know, they don't have time to do a thorough investigation. Well, they have time, but they're not going to come in and thoroughly check your house uh, while you have it up for sale. They wait till they get under contract. Then they send their contractors over. Do I need a new roof? Do I need a new air conditioning? What's the condition of the uh, electrical panel? Um, and anything else that has to be fixed that we weren't able to see when we wrote the offer. And if that number ends up being too large, they either come back to you and ask to change the price or they walk away. So you end up with, you know, back on market, away you go. And uh, so the chart for back on market looks like this. So you can see that down here that, you know, actual back on market number has not changed much. It did go up for a week. But this is the number that's affecting the percentage. Does it mean anything to you? Well, maybe not. I mean, if you went from 3.6 to 6, if you're listing your home, um, you know, just make sure that your buyer is pre-qualified and it's that it's solid and have your agent call the lender and talk to them. Say, hey, how's this look? And here's listings under contract. Um, went up a little bit past couple of weeks, but it has since been going down and down. That shouldn't surprise anybody. Again, here's your listing success rate that we touched on just a moment ago. But here's an interesting 
one right here and I'm going to move my mug for a second. This is simply called Mortgage Credit Availability Index. In other words, we're sitting at 102. So how much mortgage credit availability is there as an index? In other words, is lending tighter now than it was last year? Is it tighter now than it was 10 years ago? And you can see it's it's tightened up as interest rates are coming up. You know, the lending practices are or tightening up but you can see where we run into the problem back here and from 2005 to 2006 you know there was the old industry saying all you gotta do is fog up a mirror and you can get a loan and uh, that's when things uh, spiraled down quickly because you look at the index it's almost bucking around 900 and now we're down here 102.5 so you can see that this here was the soup and the beginning of the problems for the great housing reset that we encountered in 2008. And so when you hear things now like, oh, I hear lending's really tightening up, it it has, but not really that much. Um, you know, as interest rates are going up, one of the things going on in the lending industry right now is, um, you know, they're really afraid um, that they're gonna get you locked into a rate at, I'll just spit out 7%, and then what if rates go down next year and you gotta refinance, now they lose the loan uh, there's, they're going to have costs incurred. There's fees they got to pay. And so um, there's more nervousness in underwriting. They want to make sure that that file is, is very, very solid. Now, the interest rate discussion continues more and more. And I got to tell you, friends, it's all over the map, mostly because of England. Because England tightened up just like we did because they've got inflation. Now we've got double-digit inflation uh, around the world in emerging markets like South America, Latin America, um, certain parts of Europe. And that's why the United Nations is saying, hey, uh, United States, you got to back off on this uh, higher rate run that you're on because it's hurting everybody else with the dollar being so strong. So we're kind of between a rock and a hard place you're trying to solve the inflation crisis and at the same time, um, you know, not ruin everybody else's economy. But the Bank of England had to just back off and inject all this money back into the system, more quantitative easing, because their pensions were in trouble. And it's it's not a real complicated math formula, but you can look up what's going what went on with uh, pensions in the UK. And are we that far behind them? Are we going to run into the same problem? And the conversations are starting to swirl. They're saying possibly. And so is that going to force the Fed to pivot? Well, another thing that's going on is, as part of that, why questions are swirling around who will buy more than $31 trillion of U.S. debt and at what price? So the article here is going on to say that for the first time ever, the national debt crossed over $31 trillion a month. This month, not a month, holy cow. Uh, at a time when the Federal Reserve is in retreat from buying government debt and foreign investors' interest in it, is waning. So what they're saying is that the federal government is trying to pull back. They're not buying treasuries like they were. Uh, they're not dumping mortgage-backed securities yet. They say they're going to do that over time. They've just stopped purchasing. And so you've got Japan and you've got China that have stopped buying treasuries, at least really backed off. So who's going to buy them now? And at what price is what this article says. So what they're saying was, well, there's people out there that will want to buy these, but they're going to want to return. In other words, they're going to want to see higher interest rates in order to be interested in treasuries. And if they're not, and that liquidity seizes up, that makes getting a loan, getting a mortgage, all that more difficult. Not only a mortgage, but borrowing for businesses and everything. So we can't have that credit market seize up. So in order to keep it from seizing up, here comes the Fed again. They're going to have to come in and say, okay, all right, we're going to resume buying. We're going to go back to quantitative easing. And that's game over, folks, because that just means, well, we're just going to have to let inflation just run and run. So as we look at these markets and we look at what mortgage rates are doing, it's important to keep an eye on the bigger picture. Um, you know, mortgage rates right now are sitting and still at about 7.14%. Um, it's not lining up too good right here. Let me see. There we go. 7.14. So we haven't had a big spike up yet today. Uh, but, you know, there could be a day where um, it starts flying up and then everything changes and it could be a real game changer. So that's what we like to watch here and keep an eye on. Uh, the local market is definitely slow.
If you've got a house on the market, you're feeling it right now. The traffic is just dead. Um, very few people are going to open houses. Um, so you're going to see just the sales volume continue to just trudge along the bottom as we get into our slow season of November and December. Now, October is not supposed to be slow, but alas, it is. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, it is what it is. So we'll just keep watching it and see what happens from there. But thanks for watching. Hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Take care.